Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to calculate the deflection of a truss. Again, this is example number two. We've just added in some more members. Example number one, we just applied the point load here at B with just these three members, basically just adding in two more and uh, making it for a bit of a longer problem. All right, so if you remember in the last video, we were looking for the elastic strain energy. And in these truss deflection problems where we have a single point load, we have this expression here where we take the sum of all of those internal forces in each member times the length of each member, uh, and then that was over to a e. Okay, so we are usually given length a the cross-sectional area and modulus of the elasticity. The only thing we need to do is uh, use statics to find the internal uh, the internal force in each member, and then we can solve for the elastic strain energy. Once we get that, then we just plug it into this expression, which is u is equal to um, one half p and in this case we're looking for the deflection here at point d so this is going to be yd and then we can rearrange that where we get yd is just going to be equal to uh, two times the strain energy over the applied load so let's go and draw a free body diagram for the entire structure to solve for the reactions at a and c and we're going to find that CX is 75 kilonewtons facing to the right, AX is 75 kilonewtons to the left, and AY is just equal to P. It's 50 kilonewtons, but it's pointing in the upward direction. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the method of joints to break this down one joint at a time. And we'll start with joint D to find out the internal force in BD and AD, which are negative 62.5 kilonewtons. And that negative just means it's in compression, and AD is 37.5 kilonewtons. So one thing that I like to do is now that we know that this is in compression is I switch that sense of that arrow here and uh, it just helps me figure out what's going on for when I draw the next diagram here. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram for the joint at B. And we get AB is 62.5 kilonewtons in tension and then BC is negative 75 kilonewtons in compression so again we can just switch that. Uh, that direction there just for ourselves so uh, we can see that that's the actual way that it's pointing now by inspection if we look at uh, if we look at joint C here um, BC is going to be pressing straight into the wall perfect it's very it's perfectly horizontal the reaction is perfectly horizontal so this member AC has to be a zero force member by inspection at joint C and this means that we found the internal force in every member um, if we want, we can check some things like uh, BC here is in compression, so it will be pressing against the wall here with uh, 75 kilonewtons. And we did calculate CX here to be 75 kilonewtons pressing this way, so that checks out. We can also just check the, uh, the joint at A here and just make sure that we get all the same answers. And no matter which way we do it, we find that AB is 62.5 kilonewtons in tension, whether we're doing the sum of forces in Y or sum of forces in X. And that checks out with what we calculated it for over here where AB was 62.5 kilonewtons in tension. All right, so now we have all of the internal forces, we have all of the lengths, all of the areas, and all of the moduluses of elasticity. So we can go ahead and plug our numbers into this equation. Let's just bring it down here. Um, if we do this, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five members. This equation is going to get pretty long. So the way that I would recommend doing it instead is setting up a little table like this and just bringing in all of the known values that we have, right? So we have all of the internal forces that we calculated in here. All of the lengths are given to us on the, uh, the original drawing. We know that E is 200 gigapascals and area is 600 uh, millimeters squared. So we can just go and drop all of that into the table. And then what you want to do is you want to go line by line and apply the expression. So we have F squared times L divided by 2 times A times E. If your problem is like this and A and E are constant uh, for every member, then basically what I would do is I'd put 2 times A times E into your calculator, save that in the memory, and then it's going to speed up this calculation if you're on a test because you'll just have to do F squared L divided by whatever that thing is that you saved in your memory. Uh, so it's going to look like this, and then you can sum them up at the bottom to get 26.823 newton meters. So that is the elastic strain energy, so we can write that as... 26.823 newton meters and again if we just rearrange this to solve for the displacement at D the vertical displacement at D right because this will displace in the direction that the force is pushing it um, so we'll come down here we already have this expression set up for us so we have YD 
is equal to 2 times u, which is 26.823 newton meters. Divide that all by the applied force, which was 50 kilonewtons. So we'll just put that into newtons, so that's 50 thousand newtons and that's going to give us yd here is uh, 0 0.00107 meters or in millimeters we have uh, yd is equal to 1.07 millimeters so there we go uh, when we apply that single point load of 50 kilonewtons to our truss, we get 1.07 millimeters of deflection, and that is purely uh, the vertical deflection, uh, which is downward in the direction that the point load is pointing.